Are you ready? Letting people trickle in here. D on here. Uh oh. Waiting. Oh, wait, uh, my eye is on the uh, chat. We'll see. We'll see. All right, y'all. Welcome. We're going to start in a minute. Okay. Oh. Recording. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this very special time. Very special time for um, people who love astrology and um, a special night for people who love art. Um, maybe a special time for people who hate those two things and that's okay. Um, you can be here too. You will not suffer because every artist here is worth your attention. Oh, my name is Sister Bride and this is a, um, a final show from a class that's called Space Craft, which is a 10 week class a uh, playground for artists to learn astrology uh, by way of making creative work about their own birth charts. So yes, week after week, I've been drilling these artists with very challenging prompts based off of the planets in their chart. And tonight is the culmination uh, by that, I mean the prompt for the show was your chart, the grand synthesized gesture. So this is a bit of a pageant, a bit of a celebration, and also you're basically just sitting in on a class of ours. <laughs> um, and so there will be some uh, group activity, group discussion, and also Stay tuned because we hope to have a Q&A uh, session attempt at the end of this show. So if questions come up uh, while uh, during the, the show, please type them into the live chat or you can um, type them into the Zoom chat if you're in this room or DM me at Sister Bride. Um, I think uh that's that's all that's the introduction and i think everything's feels right with the world so let's get started it is my deep space honor to introduce you to the first artist tonight please everyone 
open your uh, digital hearts to Lacey per pitch head key. Thank you. Um, I'm going to share my screen and I made a video for you to see. So let's get into the 20th century, at least, if not the 21st. Can you see it? Okay, good. Oh, I forgot to press uh, that optimize thing. Hold on, I'm gonna start again. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Well, it might not be optimal because I wanted a password and I never know my password. So here we go. This is my chart. I am a Taurus rising with an Aquarius sun and Aries moon.
Thank you. That is my art. Thank you, Renee. Lacey, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, it's so interesting because it made me think about, right, sometimes the astrological energies come through us through the logic that we're holding. And our logic is like this um, cast mold that the, the energies like wax into. Um, and it was so beautiful to watch that the wax kind of, yeah, become its own form um, and have its own personality at the end. Dynamic personality. Any other impressions? I loved how the change in perspective at the end, being able to see it from the top because uh, when it melted around, it was in the shape of a circle. So it kind of, and then it had the lines going across. It kind of looked like a chart. Yeah, I was using a spiritualist trumpet. It's sort of like a megaphone for spirits during a seance. And I, the wax got too heavy and then it fell. And I kept lifting up and being like, ooh, it's like making a circle. So that happened organically? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's super cool. That is super cool. Lacey, how did it feel to burn all those candles? So good. I've just been obsessed with wax. As you know, I've been talking about this whole time. Um, and I really like thinking about how, like, our chart is not just one thing at once. And it's a combination. And sometimes more of it shows than others. Um, and also, I realize that burning candles takes a really long time. <laughs> But it was fun. It was um, like a day long ritual. And I used each color of the candle. It was associated with, with planet and sign that I was burning. And then I used corresponding glitter and I used some sunflower oil to dress the candle. And um, I was burning some incense on the side and I only set off my fire alarm once. So that's a good art project, I think. <laughs> Lacey, I love the music too. And, um, you know, how did you feel the whole thing came together? Like when it was finished, did you feel like it was kind of another representation of your chart? I mean, the, watching it was really amazing. I loved it. Thank you, Meow. Yeah, that's my friend's band, Brute Heart. Um, and I thought about using a Croatian love song because it was super dramatic, but it wasn't long enough. Um, I, I worked on it up until like, uh, five minutes before we started. So I, this is just like the first time that I watched it all at once. Uh, and I, I am, it was really fun to watch. I thought about fast forwarding it even more. And I thought about doing it. So it like built back up again. And I think if we had more time, I would do like the candles burning down the candles burning up. Well, as I put in my chat, it was mesmerizing. So I loved it. So congratulations. Thank you, mom. <laughs> it was mesmerizing. <clears throat> I noticed that you burned all these candles and you used the fire element. Would you ever consider doing your chart in other elements? Ooh, maybe. The prompt for this was Neptune and my Neptune's in Sag. And so I was like, Neptune feels very waxy to me because it's like not, it's like liquid, solid, it disappears. Um, but I like that idea of seeing what the other elements would be like. We have another question from Josh Ruda Shaw asking if the candles were scented. No but I was burning um, some frankincense incense, incense in a little cauldron on the side. And some tape burned, so I guess there was some scent. Nothing beats a time-lapse. Um, 
something about it too is like you charging up your chart, um, taking your chart to an energy worker or something. And like, I feel your chart having left as a different, more brighter chart because of this ritual. For sure. I was inspired by um, this artist in which Alison Halter, who um, is also an astrologer, and she developed this way of singing, like she developed a different sound and tone for each sign. And um, she did a residency at the future and we all like stood in the middle of a group and then sung the group. And I after I heard we sung our um, our sun, moon and rising. And I just felt like I understood my chart so much more because of that. And so I was thinking about that experiment during this and thinking like, Ooh, like just, I haven't sat down for a whole day and like thought about my chart. And I put the generational planet candles all together at the end. So it was just another way of like making my brain think about a chart in a new way. Lacey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. We have someone next. And that will be D. D, how are you doing? Hello. I'm I'm well. Thank you. Um I am going to share my screen as well. Just gonna take myself off quickly. Okay, actually I'll say, I guess um, my signs are, um, my sun is in Libra, my rising is in Leo and my moon is in Sagittarius. And <laughs> okay, so this uh, piece is called um, Nothing to Wear and uh, two formats ish. So um, this is, um, I would say about 90% of the, the clothing I own. And um, most are, you know, hand-me-downs from loved ones and um, that are here and that are not here like on this planet, not on this Zoom call. I mean, you know, streaming. And uh, I don't mean to be zooming in on my butt crack. I should, probably should have done like half nudity warning. Um, great. So this is um, that. And I kind of would, you know, I'd love to be in a live um, setting and like in a public place and be able to kind of work from there. Um, so that's my... That's what I do as an artist, as um, live performance. So I, I kind of did this to give a feeling of what it would be. And that that is my work. Really powerful piece, D. Really mm -hmm. moving and powerful piece. Um, I love, it seemed like you, the cut was layered by color or areas of color, which I totally, my closet is like that. So I totally love that piece of it, um, that it becomes a wall and that there you are naked behind the wall, but that it's the most vulnerable state to be in. And the wall is really not all that protective. 
Um, mm -hmm. It's more of a symbolic wall uh, and that you play with it. You know, the, I love the video and the, the legs up in the air and almost like a water ballet. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, thank you. Definitely was a delicate wall. That's very nice. <laughs> I love the stages of emotions that you are in, like kind of kind of mimics the way when you're in your closet, it's like happy. And then like eventually you were like really had a really frustrated face because because you couldn't find anything to wear. <laughs> I just thought that was a really great culmination, just seeing at what you've done the past 10 weeks. Like that was just like a very perfect way to go out. Oh. It like it took the the playfulness and the seriousness and just like was the perfect middle. Thank you, thank you, Victoria. Thank you. It's really thank you. Also, for anyone who's not privy, D is a Leo rising with a whole bunch of Scorpio in the fourth house. So I, I just love this. Such a great. Ex expression of this D of like the Leo is so out there like wanting to be vulnerable be seen be naked and then the Scorpio is like wanting privacy wanting protection especially in the fourth house um it's just that beautiful um friction of those two things is so well done I love thank that. you I love that idea of like, um, like our chart is what outfit we're wearing that day. And like, we're not always wearing every piece of our chart, but we also get to decide. Sometimes I feel like um, it's easy to be like, oh, it's because of my Aries moon. And it's like, mm, it, it was reminding me like, I get to wear my Aries moon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I, started too because you know I wanted this to be like the Neptune this extravagant um you know uh, mystical show and I just couldn't choose <laughs> so definitely it's, uh, and so it is yeah it's true I loved the little song that you sang too and the way you layered it up that was like that was very Neptune like dreamy um mm -hmm. And I, I thought it was interesting because if you were performing it live, you couldn't necessarily like accomplish exactly that piece of music, which is kind of interesting. Definitely, definitely true. Special element just for just for you, just for this viewing. <laughs> Yeah, enhances the intimacy, hearing Dee's voice so close. Anyone else? Well, we have questions here now. Um, we have a nice comment. I can't unsee D. so relatable. <laughs> Thank you. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> we also have another Leo rising, Katie Akbar, and they say totally resonated with balancing the need to be seen and feeling naked. Mm. Thank you, Katie. D, thank you for getting naked for us. Anytime. Just, <laughs> um, just thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so, Natasha, do you want to go now? Is that too soon or? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go. All right, everyone. We have Natasha Mercado. Hi. Uh, I am a rising Virgo, a sun Capricorn, and a moon Taurus. So a bunch of earth for y'all today. Okay. I'm 
Kijk, sturen. sometimes I don't allow myself to uh, really sit in what needs to be rejected because I'm always going on to the next thing and I think that comes with an obstinate belief of, in my own self-worth which I do not feel apologetic for, so. One time he said to me, oh, you're so confident. And I said, said something like, it's all a lie. Not that, but something like that. And then he said, oh really? And then in that moment, I knew that I had just, um, that we didn't see that thing the same way, but I didn't correct it. And I still think about that sometimes and I feel like I wish I answered the question truthfully. Yeah, I think the subconscious is fascinating and I think that everyone should go to therapy. Excuse me, can I just fill up my gas tank, please? Don't ever talk to my daughter again. any truly original ideas and if anything it's more inspiring to learn about history and see how we're all connected and try to believe that we're making something new I didn't realize I was a perfectionist until this year when the definition of perfectionist was given to me that there can't be drafts of things. Because it's true, I get really frustrated when a first draft isn't the thing that I can already turn in or show or feels good enough. being honest about how I would like the world to change. I would like it to stop worshiping false gurus. I would like it to stop taking itself so seriously. 
And I would like everyone to just have fucking fun. Because there's so many beautiful things to do. So freaking do it. Just do it. That's, that's my piece. <laughs> you are just such a brilliant genius. I could watch hours of that exclusive interview. You are... <laughs> hilarious and I love that it's like delivered really funny but um a lot of good stuff to think about you're so good it was so good I'm like crying because I'm laughing so much oh thanks Lacey yeah I was really um inspired by the Charles Bukowski tapes for this uh where he has just these slow meanderings and I think over the course of the 10 weeks I didn't or I, I wanted to use this as a chance to meander. And uh, so I'm glad you liked it. The beautiful uh, moon and Taurus in the ninth, Natasha. This like, these spurts of philosophy from the tree. Um, and then, right, that moon is square Venus and you're in Aquarius, which is yeah. kind of like um, making sure we're not getting too serious here and uh, making, yeah, infusing it with humor and the unexpected. And this is beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think a lot of what Lacey was saying about Aquarius being an alien uh, resonated with me a lot. And so then looking at it afterwards, I'm like, oh yeah, this makes sense emotionally for me in a lot of ways. I loved getting to see the tree again. And I, a lot of what you said resonated with me and I'll remember it for a long time. <laughs> Great. For real. Yeah, that, that like ending to at the end of each sentence, that little like the piece of music, I feel like I'll just hear that in my, it was so, um, yeah, it's such a great tag on everything. It was the whole piece, yeah, it was really, it's just genius. And like, I could watch that. I hope to watch more and more and we'll watch that over and over. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, Natasha. Oh, Renee. I just really enjoyed the tree. I mean, the tree dressing up um, with the mat with the human mask and kind of that that play and the um, the dry sense of humor. The tree. <laughs> yeah. That was my take on pleasure and collaboration. So, yeah, and I looked. I looked back at. Um, 
the planet descriptions that you provided in the beginning, Blair, and and improvise off of that while recording. And you're you're still following through with this. You know, you have all this Aquarius with Scorpio Taurus. This just like objective viewpoint of what's kind of primal um, and and a little too emotional and attached. Uh, so this is like a perfect rendition of that, like a tree. I felt like the tree was at like on a psychologist's couch or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just such a great a reflection of your chart. Thank you. Something about the tea drinking really got to me and maybe it was coffee, but that it was, was water. It was, well, that's, that can be your secret. <laughs> I liked that though. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you. All right, we're rolling, we're rolling. We're growing limbs and branches and we're going to branch off to Saul Ingram. Hello, um, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, let's see, uh, well, yeah, so my, rising sign is Sagittarius and I'm a Virgo sun and moon and the rulers of my chart are Jupiter and Mercury so when I got this prompt um, the first thing I thought of is what you'll see which is the, the concept of teaming up so I'm gonna share my screen let's see All right, let's see if I can make it bigger. Okay, so this is a cover for a comic based off of the Marvel team up comics, um, which would have featured like Spider-Man and the Black Panther or whatever. So this is my Astro team up comic featuring Jupiter and Mercury with each of their like gangs. Um, can you see my little mouse so I can like describe things? Um, so obviously Jupiter, um, with his little Sagittarius buddy, um, and Uranus and Saturn are all, um, they're all together. Well, Sagittarius, Uranus, Saturn are all in the same area. And then, well, I'm, I'm not going to describe it at this much length. Anyway, so this is the team up comic, but I decided to, um, use associations and find the plants and the animals that were associated with either each um, planet or each house or sign rather that they're in. Um, and so this was kind of a little bit intuitive and a little bit based off of all of the wealth of knowledge and literature that's out there about this. Um, so let me zoom it in a little bit more. Um, and of course, I'm such a big nerd. I had to like make it a, a comic. So, and everything is, you know, like three and five are important. 80 is important. It's the 10th of May. All of these things are like connected. Um, and like the side panel here is the planets and placements that are not necessarily in either Sagittarius, Pisces, or um, Virgo, but they're still part of it. And I might have to make a key for this for when it goes up on the in the gallery because every single thing is important and of course the comic is the integration you know um but yeah that is my piece and oh and there's the only thing that's like not related specifically to either a planet or um a sign is this like vine of poison ivy that's going across um 
and that's just poison ivy is an important plant uh, to to me and the plant work that I do. But yeah, notice the little owl. I have to point the owl out because he's little. <laughs> All right, that's that's that. And like I said before we went live, I spent yesterday and today drawing this because maybe it's like probably the Uranus in my Sagittarius that makes me like literally wait till the last minute to do things. Um, and now I can't like draw for probably like three days. <laughs> Al, it feels like the perfect marriage of all of the things you're most passionate about. And so it makes me really happy to see the piece, just that beautiful drawing ability. I, I do miss your color. Yeah, I, I did want to color it, um, but clearly couldn't get that far. And I, at one point, had thought about making it all in cut paper, and maybe I still <laughs> will, but that's a much bigger project that would take a bit longer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did, I might, I probably still will color it. That was just what I, what I got at this point. Um, and because the prompt was Neptune, um, that's why I went so hard on using the like plant and animal associations. Um, Cause I do a lot of dream work and a lot of those, like each planet and each sign has multiple plants and animals that are associated with them. Um, but I found as I was like going through the lists and thinking about it and choosing that some things felt really, really intuitive. And then some things were like, oh, right. That's like, I dream about that. Um, like I wouldn't have associated a bear with Neptune initially, but like it just made so much sense um, that Neptune would be represented as a bear um, who sleeps all the time. And I literally sleep with a bear and have since I was like a little child. So I decided his name was Neptune yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then uh, there's. Go ahead. Sorry. I feel like you would just learn so much about your chart by writing that book with the interactions, you know, between the planets, like out of their aspects or something. Yeah, this is definitely a comic I would like to, like, just read. I guess I'll have to write it though. The it's funny, Saul. Because first of all, this is like Virgo next level, Virgo stellium next level, but also it there's movement in it. I'm feeling your Sagittarius rising in it. I, I can see the whole story already happening while just looking at this one photo. Um, there's there's such an explosion of um, the the comic already having being written, all happening in my head immediately, just eyeing that. To make one more note which is that the volcano in the back in the background is because i have so much earth and fire in my chart but not a well there's a little bit of water too but i so that's why there's a volcano and it's vesuvius specifically which is the volcano that is not far from like my ancestral lands which is very pisces fourth house related stuff Bravo. It is very stunning. And the attention to detail, just like you, the fact that the only thing in the picture that doesn't have a meaning is that one, the one thing that, that says a lot. I could, I want a big version of it or, or one that symbolizes me. We, we can talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe I can do one of those uh, riff off of you again. Yeah. That's a good idea. Really awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? Katie Akbar loves the intricacies and wants a key for all the layers.
Um, also, Allen says you're stupidly good at drawing. <laughs> Thank you, Saul. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, where are we at? Sharon, how you feeling? Everyone, this is Sharon Kagan. Um, I'm a Gemini sun and an Aquarius rising and Aquarius moon. My chart is almost entirely air, no earth whatsoever. So I'm, I'm happy to have, you know, my earth sisters balancing out the room. <laughs> Um, this is a very experimental uh, series of photographs that I'm going to show you. And here we go. Wait a minute, excuse me. Got to start here. So this is my chart projected onto me. My, my take on this assignment although it probably is very Neptune, um, was to really address how differently I see astrology and my chart since taking the class. And I always saw it as something that was like out here that I would look at a piece of paper or I'd look at a screen and there would be this chart and it would represent these things, the stars that were way out there. Um, and now I see it like these layers of who I am. And so you'll see where we, so this was the first one. I think it's really, I didn't very unconsciously using my bridal veil to create this thing, but for sister bride, that seems like the way to go. And you can see little bits of my chart, like down in the bottom where the, um, where my face is around my neck, you can see that blue line that's part of the triangle. It's, and then I started playing with video um, project, my video projector using images of my paintings um, to create the feeling that I have about my chart and astrology in general, that it's more like all these layers and that there's this, veil that I'm looking through that has all these colors and aliveness and areas that are confusing and various that are clearer. That is it. That last photo was amazing. There's like so many details, but like the way the light is hitting your eye and were you wearing something that made like a tiny little like sliver of moon show up or is that just like magic of light? There's like a little sliver of moon. Do you see on my, on my, in the middle of my screen, this little white in the painting? This is the painting that was projected onto me. And so that's that little sliver of moon. So beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah, Sharon, that, I mean, the whole series amazing, but I am obsessed with that first photo. And I think it, is so representative of the journey that we all went through together these last 10 weeks. And so beautiful, just so freaking beautiful. So thank you. It looks like a painting, like it looks like a really delicate watercolor because of how soft everything is. Um, and I, I thought the use of that wedding veil too is brilliant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, the one thing that I want to go back and play some more is I want to shoot from the inside out because the light of the colors of the painting coming through the veil 
or it was so beautiful. So that, that, that will be the next phase. I really love that seeing from the outside and the inside with all your Gemini. And also your photos are stunning. That last one was so beautiful. Truly so dreamy and yeah, it, so ha I'm so happy to have seen it. <laughs> like what a, what a treat. Thank you for. It was really fun to do. It gave me some kind of feeling, but I don't know what the word is but it was like I I like it kind of shows how much air you have and it, I feel like that much air is like not here and not there it's kind of sometimes hard to know what we're looking at and I really like that maybe I'll maybe in a couple of days I'll realize what the feeling is but it definitely like gave me like a oh when I was watching it I like that Thank you. There, there are some of the images, um, I took a lot of photos, but some of the images, the face goes completely flat and the veil feels very dimensional. And I found that really interesting too, where it's like, I'm the piece of paper and, and the chart is what's dimensional. <laughs> For sure you would really dig that paradox, Sharon. Um, we have a great comment from Katie Akbar. I love the first image and the veil. Um, I got a married to my chart kind of vibe. That's perfect. <clears throat> I love that. which is an endless marriage. And I think that was a great example, right? Your astrology is so endless. So you're, you're never bored. You're always trying to keep up with it because you're never really sure what side of the prism of it you're going to get. And like, who, who are you married to actually really? Um, so I thought that, and I really loved what you were saying too, Sharon, just about your relationship to astrology and how that's been um, cultivated. And thank you for that. You know, you, you said to me at one point something about that I understand patterns and that's been really like a guiding force for me since you said it. And that's what I, I wanted this to be a tribute to you and what you've given me in terms of my understanding. So thank you. You're doing all the work. Thank you. Anyone else? A lot of admirers in the chat. Sharon, thank you so much. Okay. Who's getting married next? We have Victoria Giordano, you ready? All right. So a week ago, I was at a restaurant and they had a very large print of this by Kadinsky. And I was immediately inspired by it. I knew I had to do it because the Neptune, my Neptune's in Capricorn, which can be kind of boxy and hard to synthesize. So I decided to make my own version in a video form, which I'm going to share. I'm going to play that once and then I'm going to explain how each part connects to my chart. I'm going to play it again to do that. Okay. So screen optimize video quick. Okay.
Okay. So my, in the top left corner is my Libra and rising, or my right Libra rising, appearance of symmetry. The next is my son in Taurus. I'm in a non-moving car, but I'm still wearing my seatbelt, eating fries. My moon's in Capricorn, which is my date spreadsheet of daily habits and personal interactions. My Mercury in Taurus. I'm slow talking in a fuzzy jacket. Venus in Pisces. They love me, they love me not. Mars in Leo. Fighting with fire and looking good doing it. Jupiter in Sagittarius. Walking up an escalator, which is making myself even faster in a foreign country. Um, okay. Saturn in Pisces, walking up and down hidden stairs. Uranus in Aquarius, having fun with my strange reflection. Neptune in Capricorn, a butterfly made of money. And Pluto in Sagittarius, communing with art around the fire with new friends. That's the best description of Taurus <laughs> sitting in a park car with your seatbelt on snacking. Oh, it's perfect. It's so bad. Oh, I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> Thank you. I kind of want the, the, your descriptions of them as a, like fortune cookies or like, I mean, the way you make the image go with the situation, you know, the combination of planet and uh -huh. line is just brilliant. I think you could do a whole book on just Im an image and those things. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Really you. Cool. I did make a version of this with the overlay of the inspiration painting over it because the, it perfectly aligned with the squares and, but uh, it made it too difficult to see the videos. I love this so much. I thought the music was perfect too. It was giving me, um, what's her name? Cherry Bomb, what was her name? Oh, the, the Cherry Vanilla? Cherry Vanilla. It was giving me Cherry Vanilla vibes from previous meetings. Yeah. So, yeah. It was really, really fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I second Lacey's comment. The two Taurus squares were hilarious and so <laughs> spot on. <laughs> so good. Thanks for watching. So thoughtful, Victoria. Um, I like to like your Mercury being in the eighth house, Neptune's right on your IC. You're such a visual thinker, you know, as it is. Um, it was nice, like you're like unraveling a yarn ball or something for us through these images. It's beautiful. Thank you. It was really fun. Um, oh yeah, all in good, good, uh, nice, nice catch. Um, they said, I also have Neptune and Capricorn and resonate with the compartmentalizing imagery like this. <laughs> yep, yep. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, thank you. Okay, wow. And last, not least, we have Renee Sills. Renee. Hey, everyone. Um, I have to share my screen. Can you see my mouse too? 
Um, all right, so I did a performance of a self-portrait for the grand, for the big picture, for the grand gesture. I really appreciated Blair's invitation to think about our charts in their mythic proportions. Um, so here's my chart. Here's me. Um, I'm a Leo sun. The backdrop, this gold backdrop is my Leo rising. Uh, this silver platter is my Taurus moon. Uh, this crystal is Mercury in Virgo. Um, I'm holding these symbols uh, for Venus in Virgo. The scissors on the platter are for Mars in Cancer. Um, this is a belt that I made as a teenager. Um, I stitched together uh, like a hundred um, little discs of these kind of flowers and attached them. And it's like a, a power magical belt and it's for my Jupiter and Sagittarius. Um, this statue here is Saturn in Libra. Um, you can kind of see here this small little being. It's a doll uh, with a star for its face. And this is Uranus and Sagittarius. Here's um, this heart-shaped bowl. You can't see it, but it's actually a candle holder. There's a flame inside. And that is my Neptune and Sagittarius. Um, this sculpture is uh, Pluto in Libra. The charm bracelet that's hanging around this jar is for my North Node in Gemini. Uh, this antler <laughs> is for my Chiron in Gemini. The skull is for my South Node in Sagittarius. Uh, the jar and the feathers are for Vesta in Virgo. There are two shells here for Ceres and Juno in my chart. I have Ceres and Aquarius and Juno and Aries. And um, the silver vase and the flowers are for Pallas and Capricorn. And then this bouquet um, is for Lilith. Uh, and I also have Lilith and Aquarius in my chart. So I tried to represent all of the placements that I, that I use. I love it, obviously. It's like so appealing on so many levels. Um, and thank you for going all the way through it and describing all of the intricacies. Um, and it's a really beautiful image as well. So just great all around. You didn't mention the shadow, but I thought that was a really important part of the image. Um, and I wonder how you think about it in terms of your chart, but the color of the photograph is so beautiful. It, it's just sumptuous and luxurious and rich and sensual and beautiful and everything I love. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, actually, thanks for saying that. I was thinking about the shadow. Um, I, you guys have seen my chart. So I was born like right at, right before dawn. So kind of at the moment when things are starting to get light and there actually still is shadow. And the shadow at that time is kind of incredible. Um, and I was born in August in the Southwest. So I was trying to like create the golden, like the golden light of that time of day. And the, and the way, you know, if, if you've ever been like in the desert when the sun starts to come up and like 
weird shadows that happen there. So gorgeous. Thank you for taking the time to symbolize everything in your chart. It was amazing. I felt like it was one of those like old master paintings where like everything has a symbol and it feels like, um, not like a scavenger hunt, but just like there's like a treasure, like everything's a treasure. And it's like, ooh, what does this mean? And it was cool to see a representation of all of the asteroids too. Thank you for saying that. I realized I forgot to say one thing, which is that there are also hand gestures in the chart because I was really inspired by um, like, I think there are many kind of traditions of this kind of portraiture with a lot of symbolism um, in it, but a lot of the religious iconography that I, I appreciate, but also like, yeah, whatever, whatever style those paintings are, I don't know. But um, there's this symbol, which is a mudra for the earth. And then um, this symbol, which has been used in a lot of paintings historically as a um, like a gesture to Venus or to Aphrodite. And then I also, when I was researching it, found out that it was a secret symbol used for Iberian Jews in Spain who were like hiding, kind of in hiding, um, which I recently learned I have an ancestor. Um, Yeah, Renee, there's something about this photo that like really encapsulates your entire life. Like it's like the the photo next to the casket or like um, right when like uh, someone dies, like you don't think about them at the age they died. You like flash to this moment of their like prime in your head. And like, that's that photo. <laughs> Renee Sills, the life lived. Um, it's just so epic. Um, maybe this was ready the, yeah, the, does the pose represent anything specifically from Katie? Yeah. I think we answered that. Anything else? Anyone else? Thank you, Renee, so much. My heart is full. I am so pleased. Uh, thank you everyone for your work and for your vulnerability. Thank you everyone who came to support this show tonight. Um, oh yeah, all in saying you should use that for an album cover, <laughs> Renee. Um, Yes, um, thank you all for attending. Um, we will send you off on your way. Um, please uh, keep in touch. All of this work will be on um, a Trans Neptune Gallery website. Um, I'm like, is there a link? Is it mysterious? Let's see. Uh, no, it's not mysterious. I will put a link in the chat. And I wish you all well. Um, the universe made you and knew what it was doing. And um, hope everyone has enjoyed themselves. So thank you, thank you. Maybe we'll send you off with some Planetary sounds here. So long, so long.